A year and a half ago, we traded our house for a boat to live on the water. We knew what we wanted, but we didn't know how. Crazy? Yep, maybe a little. So what do you think about uh, mom and dad going to such an extreme? I think mean, it's really, really cool. And I'm proud to say that my parents are cool parents. <laughs> With zero boating experience, but lots of courage, we were ready to make this happen. Classroom studies and hands-on lessons by a licensed captain gave us the confidence we needed to leave the safety of a protected marina in Jacksonville, where our journey started. Hi, I'm Monica, and this is Darren. With virtually no boating experience, we decided to sell our house and everything that went with it to buy a boat and live on the water. Together with our dog, Captain Kaya, we're preparing to cast our lines and cruise to the warmth of the southern islands. So climb aboard and come with us as we go seeking adventure. St. Augustine, Miami, and the Keys are some of the places we've visited along the way since we started our journey a year and a half ago. We have crossed Florida Bay, spent time in the Everglades, and we have crossed Lake Okeechobee, which brought us back to the East Coast to our current location, Stewart, a perfect crossroad should a hurricane come our way. We started out on the mooring ball, but ended up in the marina due to a faulty generator. With the average July temperature in the 90s, plus high humidity, Stewart is not a great place to be without air conditioning. Stewart, known as the sailfish capital of the world, is a small, cool town on the east coast of Florida. The town is full of colorful trees and modern art. You'll also find swarms of colorful dragonflies and an abundance of the invasive but beautiful red-headed African agama lizard. And there are fun museums. When do these become museum pieces? Do you know what this is, Dan? I do not, Monica. My mom used this when I was a little kid to beat uh, carpets. So you take a rug up from the uh, floor and you hang it over something and you beat the dust out of it. Beat the dust out of it. You beat the dust out of it. <laughs> That's really cool. I wonder what these are called. I have no idea, but that, that brought back some memories from my childhood. Do you know what the glasses are right above that? The, the glasses? Col the, the colorful blue glasses, these? yep. Do you know what those are? Salt and pepper shaker? No. The green glass, I think, has something to do with uh, the electricity uh, lines that would run to people's homes. We'll have to double check that before we put it in a video, though. Yeah, it's not a salt and pepper shaker. With temperatures in the 90s, the asphalt and boardwalk can easily reach 150 degrees which means the only sensible thing to do is to wear shoes. That goes for dogs as well, although Captain Kaya is not so sure about that. Staying in one place for a while allows us to explore beyond the marina. The House of Refuge was on our list and it did not disappoint. There used to be 10 of these houses along the east coast, 
but this house of refuge in Martin County is the last one standing. These houses were designated as life-saving stations for shipwrecked survivors along Florida's east coast. The map over here shows you the 10 houses of refuge that were built. This is the last one still existing and is the oldest building in Martin County. Um, the others were all destroyed either by fire or by storms and torn down. It was one of the first five that were built that went down to the Miami area. Um, after that, they built four more going north. The story of the wreck of the George's Valentine is there, and the board beneath it is a piece of mahogany that came ashore from the George's Valentine. For the most part, it was a very solitary existence. Um, it was a very hostile environment and um, they were really here to just try and help any shipwrecked sailors. In he, um, on here is the records of the shipwrecks off this coast from the time that the house was established on. And it's quite detailed. We had questions that they had to answer and it's a wonderful record. We are hoping to have this published and we're looking into that right now. This is a communication paddle. The communication paddles were used by ships that they were out there and they saw another ship that was in distress. They would send over a communication paddle on the road and the communication paddle helped them communicate back and forth. But one of the biggest uses was it was shot out with a Lyle gun to a ship when it was sinking, and then they sent out the breaches buoy, and it told them how to use the breaches buoy and how to send it back to shore. But the Lyle gun shot the rope out of the ship, they grabbed the rope, then the Coast Guard would send the breaches buoy out, they would put a one seaman in it and send it back to shore. Um, and the breeches buoy is nothing but a pair of pants sewn to a life preserver. Very simple but very effective. And the gentlemen standing in the corner there are the IEs. The IEs are believed to be the first inhabitants of Hutchinson Island. They are considered prehistoric because they had no known written language. What we know about them is thanks to the Spanish. When they came, they wrote about them in their journals. The IEs were peaceful people, as far as we know. They were quite primitive. Uh, they used whatever was in nature for their tools, their implements, or their uh, weapons. Unfortunately, uh, the Europeans did bring diseases that the IEs were not immune to, and many of them died from disease. Also, as we had the migrations coming down from uh, Georgia and other areas, there was fighting among them, and so the final ones who were still around were repatriated to Cuba by the Spanish. To this day, we have no idea if there are any descendants of the IEs. However, we periodically do uncover human remains that are identified as IEs. Now, it's called Gilbert's Bar for a reason. Don Pedro Gilbert was a Spanish pilot and in the 1830s he would moor his boat, hide it, and then he'd come over here and light a fire to lure ships in and then he would raid them and kill everybody. He was eventually caught and executed. He was hanged but that's why it's called Gilbert's Bar. Now the reef that is out there, Gilbert's Bar, is made of Anastasia stone. Anastasia stone is extraordinarily hard. It's limestone and seashells. It once was all along the east coast of Florida, but most of it has been destroyed by storms and erosion from the ocean. The wreck of George's Valentine is near enough to shore that you can swim out to it. 
Although the water today is pretty rough, Darren is going to make an attempt to find it. Well, I made a very good faith effort to try to find the wreck, but I couldn't find it. It's supposed to be a hundred yards right off the house of refuge. And I, I know I went a hundred, I might've gone 150 even, but I was getting pushed around quite a bit. So it was hard to stay in a straight line off of the house. So on the way back, I was really conscious about going straight back along this fence line, but I still didn't see it. I could have been right over top of it. It's so rough out there. So I'm not sure if I can see the bottom or not. I tried though. Either way, this was a great outing and we might make another attempt at finding the wreck before we leave Stewart. in Stewart we stumbled upon this really amazing place that sells vodka but Grace here the owner of Muscle Vodka can you tell us just a little bit about who you are and sure. what this store is about other than we all know it's about vodka right <laughs> sounds good my name is Grace Gillespie and I'm the CEO and founder of Muscle Vodka and I also own this distillery here the first distillery in Martin County Florida it's called Muscle Craft Distillery so I'll make a long story short. Eight years ago, I owned a gym and a juice bar in um, Cleveland, Ohio. I competed in fitness competitions and all my clients would come to me and they're like, I'm gonna drink, don't tell me not to, but it's the best option. And I was always like, eat this, drink that. And I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna create the best option. So I took four years, did all my due diligence, studying. I went to a chemist and I said, you know what, make this happen for me. I want the cleanest form of alcohol that we could get. And I really, really, really was excited to launch it, so I launched it at the biggest, it's the Super Bowl bodybuilding, the Mr. Olympia show in Las Vegas in 2017, I launched Muscle Vodka. My vodka is all 100% gluten-free, organic, no GMO, about to be kosher, and we also 32 times charcoal filter it, so we put it through a char charcoal filtration process 32 times to make it super, super clean. And I use a reverse osmosis process to it, to make it the cleanest form of water possible. Mm -hmm. So we take out all the minerals and the, all the impurities to make it super, super smooth. We just won three of the biggest liquor shows in the world and we also won for the brand label. Um, first place for that as well in the Las Vegas competition for our liquor. In our distillery we have vodka, we have rum, we have flavored rum, we have over 25 different flavors of vodka. And I also have a moonshine which is 110 proof. I have cherry moonshine, I have Swedish gummy bear moonshine, and Swedish fish moonshine, oh. s'mores moonshine, everything, and it's all 110 proof. So delicious. Grace, you look fabulous. Thank you. You kind of go multiple steps beyond what the average person I would say yeah. because you compete, right? Right, it's like an infatuation. You love it. It like just becomes everything, and mm -hmm. you feel so great, and it's addictive of just being healthy and fit and you know, you're just out there and you're just like, I, everything is so positive with it. Is distilleries kind of like a male dominated uh, business to run? I'm the only one in America that's a one woman owned distillery. It's oh. all me 100%. But you know what I think it's time for now? A I cocktail? Think, I think it's time for a cocktail. <laughs> time for a taster. Yeah, so what is it we're going to be drinking today? We have over 25 flavors of anything you want to try. I think if we tried 25, <laughs> we to I was thinking what? the same thing. I think we should just like put a little bit and we'll share each okay. cup. Okay, so we'll have one of the coconut, coconut and one of the mocha. Did you drink them all? No. Did you share that mocha? And that's straight up 80 proof alcohol. Oh, that's that's so delicious. Nice. Isn't that good? I drink it on the rocks. I never mix any of myself with anything. Yeah. You have an amazing product here today. So we're so happy that you allowed us to come in and learn a little bit about your product, your store, and you as well. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, too.